when the Fed cuts the rate for the Fed Reserve rate. I do not think that that is really going to be a big reflection in our mortgage interest rates. And we were talking about that off air, Mike. I think we what we're seeing with the rates right now is a reflection of the anticipated move from the Fed. So I think we're kind of already baked in uh, this rate drop that we've seen over the past, you know, I mean, really, it's been since May. It's been we've kind of been on a steady Mm -hmm. decline since May. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not not a sharp decline, but, you know, a steady one. With, with some humps, uh, I think in recent weeks, we've seen even larger decline. And, I, and I, it's natural to me because mortgage rates are, there's some level of prediction that's happening there because you're locking on 30, 45, 60 day locks. And those locks basically say they're predictive, right? They're like, okay, well, we'll allow you to lock in here because we think rates are going to be more or less in this zone by the time you're closing and that that note becomes active. So uh, I do think it's baked in a little bit. I wouldn't expect a um, big movement with the Fed news uh, next week, right? Is it next week, the 18th? Mm-hmm. 18th. Is it yeah. the 18th? Yeah. 17th, so 18th. 18th, right? So next Wednesday? Yep. Unless Tuesday, the Fed Wednesday. comes out and does something crazy, like no point drop. Right? Or, or, or bigger than or a quarter. three quarters of a point, right? So Well, here here's the headline from CNBC. Don't expect immediate relief from the Fed Reserve's first rate cut in years, economist says. Here's why. And we've already talked about here's why. Mike did a very good job on that. Uh, they think that a lot of it's already baked in. Yeah. The Fed rate is not the direct correlation between Fed rate and mortgage rate. So that's another thing. The uh, 10-year Treasury bond is much better accurate indicator of moment to moment. Daily, daily, daily right. movement. Right, sure. moment to moment. So um, uh, you will not see a uh, big big changes in your mortgage rates or credit cards that are going to be life-changing. There'll be an easing probably. Um, but let's talk about this because if it happens, we're going to look like swamis, but it probably isn't going to happen. But there is scenarios, and Mike talked about it this week. I talked about it last week, Mike. I don't think you knew this, but I actually said, hey, if the rate comes in, if the Fed comes in and cuts the rate a half a point, yeah, the interest rates might go up. And every, you know, and people, that's kind of like, you oh, know, like- the cross Fed's logic, scared. if you will. Yeah. And that the theory is, is that the banking market would go, holy moly, the Fed is so concerned about uh, 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 not a soft landing that they're doing a drastic cut to that try to get real, in front a of real, it. That would be a real course reversal. Right. right. And then the banking industry might go, ah, this is looking a little too risky in the future. Right. Let's Why keep... are they doing that? Yeah. So there could be an actual increase. Now, can you imagine people's mind being blown? If that happens, it's going to blow people's mind, right? It's like, I've been waiting for this and it didn't happen, you know? I can also see like if they do a quarter instead of a half, people be like, oh, that's not good. We thought it was going to be a half. Yeah, and so that's now, just now we listen to Wall Street. Yeah, now we've uh, over overextended our, our prediction, you know, position. Right. Yeah, if that's so, the case. Uh, sure. Mm-hmm. This type of stuff makes my head spin. I'm just know. like, we're just guessing. We don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah. So it I, feels like the best thing to do would be nothing if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing here. But right. I was thinking, I, like, I, if they come out, let's say they do a three quarter point, then it's like, oh my God, that's really great news. But then Jim's counterpoint is, well, then they're really, what are they scared of? Right. What's coming down the pike? What's happening? And I could see that viewpoint too. Yeah, so it's going gonna, gonna to be very interesting to see how it goes. So I'm going to pull up right now, just for the heck of it. I'm doing this live on MLS. Uh-oh. I'm doing, uh, so we have, wow, remember last week we had 48,000 properties for sale? A couple weeks before, we were at 47,000 twice. Now we're at 49,000, 49,345. Oh. So industry, um, inventory seems to be increasing. These are very like sh- but quick doesn't snapshots. doesn't that always happen the third week of September every year? No. <laughs> yeah. No, but let's see how many. That would be so cool if it did. <laughs> Out of the 49,000, how many are foreclosures? So let's take oh. a look. Oh. 208 out of the 49,000, there's 208 foreclosures for sale. And how many short sales? Short sales are like another type of distress sale, but the owner still owns the property. It hasn't been foreclosed yet, but they're in trouble on their mortgage. There are 76. So 76 and 208 comes out to 284. So we have 284 distress sales out of 49,000 homes. That's still about a half a percent. Go ahead, Mike. But it's still a half a percent normal market, one to three percent foreclosure. I feel like I saw a meme the other day and it was a husband like sitting down with a, a, a quote bubble and he's like talking to his wife. He's like, for 20, 28 years, you've been correcting me. And then her quote bubble is 
29 years. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Good, yeah. I love that's that. Good. I like that. I really like that a lot. What'd you say? 200 and what? Uh, 284 divided, divided by, by 49,000. 49, should be equals 0. 0.0058. So it's a half a percent. A half a percent of, uh, is it, or is that, it's, or is that, is that five Five thousandths. Is it five thousandths? That's what I thought last week. I got the it math is. wrong last week too. It might be he might be right that it's less than a half a percent. It might be a fraction of a half a percent, yep. right? But anyway, we're not in trouble. Is what we're anybody waiting? And here's another trend I'm seeing related to all these interest rate changes and everything. And we keep hearing that there's 30, 60, 90 defaults on mortgages that they're noticing. Hey, you're in trouble on your mortgage, and that there's supposed this wave coming. I'm not seeing it. But you know what I am seeing? Tons of blind investor offers coming in on all the properties. You cannot believe how many blind investor offers we're getting right now. It's like been a trend. Yeah. It's like a wave that's happening. I don't, somehow, half some a way, percent is right. Somehow, some way, it's I'm a getting, half percent. I'm text messages of, hey, you want to buy? Yeah. You want to sell your house? You mm -hmm. want to sell? Oh, I get those all the time. Yeah, oh it's, God, it's happening really all the time. The up. investors are thinking this is a change in the market, and the investors are out there really hunting for. Uh, distressed home buyers, but here's the trick. They all turn in numbers. Their offers are so low that the customers we have, yeah, they couldn't even sell it to them unless they turned it into a short sale. So what does that mean? So let's say that you have your house on the market for 500, you're, you're, you owe 400 and they're turning in 325. Okay. There's no way to make that work unless you do a short sale. And there's no bank that's going to take a short sale of 325 if the house is worth 500,000. Not in this market. No, they're gonna say sell the house and then give us our money back and then keep the rest. That's it. Right? So uh, not seeing, we're not seeing the distressed market yet, guys. Sorry, all you investors out there, it's not happening yet. Yeah. There are people that need it, hey, but hey, it's hey, a small hey, fraction. And hey, they're gonna it's throw not their a wave. Out. They're gonna throw their net out and, and catch whatever they can yeah, catch. Yeah, catch but, what you catch, yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's not a wave. It is cra It is starting to crank up. The commenter yeah. made, it, made a, a good one too, mm -hmm. which is basically, and we talked Thank about you, this Pia. too, is like there, there's, um, there may be some uh, sentiment buyers either getting in or, or not or sellers based on uh november yep, right? so based for on the election. election cycle just you know so yep. certainly political cycles uh impact uh market sentiment mm -hmm. if not direct market you know uh movement certainly how people feel about the market and what's what's coming what's coming up down the pike so. right yeah so there's fear of the future on um and that's one of the things that are really holding back the buyers uh there's probably also optimism right one way or the other so you see you'll see both sides to me, it seems like most of the people are fearful of that the just person like, that just, they want to win isn't going to win. It doesn't matter which side. They yeah, both sides true. feel this way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if the other the sides ones. win, everything's going to collapse, so I don't want right. to do anything. I'm not right. hearing. I'm waiting because if the other, if one of these people get elected, things are going to get better. What I'm hearing is, oh, if the other side gets it, this is just it's talking terrible to lots of people. If my person doesn't, doesn't win, doesn't, right, yeah, it's going to sure. screw up the whole economy. Yeah. It's going to collapse. I don't want to buy natural. right now. Sure. So uh, that's what we're waiting for on that side. We haven't seen and that. Most of these people probably couldn't tell you who the mayor of their city is. That's my favorite part. It, yeah. And we've yeah. been on the this show for truly four elections now. This is our fourth presidential election on this show. We haven't ever seen, no matter who got elected in the past, affect the real estate market that dramatically that you should nope. go back. Boy, I'm sure uh -oh. I'm glad I didn't buy before November. Now the phones are going to start ringing, Jim. 